Hello everyone. In this week's lectures, we're going to talk about users, specifically managing users. So this first lecture, we're going to spend talking about local user accounts and local group accounts uh, and how we will go about logging in to Windows. In some of the later lectures, we're going to talk about creating and managing user accounts, going in, in more detail about how to configure and change the accounts, and managing user profiles, which is a whole separate thing. And then uh, we'll talk a little bit about what we call advanced authentication methods, or working with networks, being able to log in um, either remotely or across networks. So first of all, let's talk about logging into the Windows. Now, you've all been logging into Windows for last several weeks at least, if nothing else. And so you know that for most of us, let me just log out here so we can get back to the main screen. Um, most of us use the Windows sign-in screen, which is, this is our main screen when Windows first pops up. If I click on it, it takes me up here to the sign-in options. So I can sign in as Bob, who has no password. I could just click sign in and I would sign in as Bob. Or as user X, I will have to enter the password to log in as user X. Right? Simple enough. Well, there is uh, an extension to this called Secure Sign-In, which is where instead of just being able to click and then enter your information, you have to hit Control-Alt-Delete to unlock the screen first. Now, this was put in place not so much for physical security, but for uh, network online security, because some hackers would be able to just send the password, the username and password information, and be able to access the machine that way. Um, having them having the machine lock makes it much more difficult for them to to send a control delete signal and to get everything to get logged in that way. So it made it more difficult. Now to get to that point, to get to where we can change secure to secure sign on, um, we have to go down uh, here, click there, type command to get to the command prompt because there's a hidden control panel that we need to get to called the network places wizard. To get there, we would type net PL wiz and hit enter. This will open up the network places wizard, which has the label user accounts. I don't know about the naming, that's just what they call it. So here in the user accounts, the hidden user accounts control panel, if I go to the advanced tab, uh, down here you'll see secure sign-in. And if I check this box, it will require users to press control alt delete to unlock the screen before they can sign in. So, okay, let's test that out. Close this and I will log out. Let me sign out here. And notice here we have Press Control alt delete to unlock. Before, I was just able to click on the screen. Now, if I click on the screen, you'll see nothing's happening. I need to hit Control alt delete before it'll respond and before I'll be able to log into the machine. Now, for virtual machines, if you just tried to type Control alt delete now, you would send that to your machine, and that would not be helpful. If you want to press Control alt delete for a virtual machine, you go up to the virtual machine menu in, in Workstation or Fusion, whichever you're using, and go to the Send Control Alt Delete option. This will send the Control Alt Delete directly to the virtual machine and not to your main machine. And then, hey, look at that. We get to our, our normal sign-in screen where we can sign in. Okay. Now, I'm going to take you back to the Network Places wizard to show you one of the other options for signing in. And uh, give me one second to get back here. Okay, so if I go do Command Prompt here, and then back to Network Places Wizard. In here, oops, did it again. Let's let's set that up. Okay. Okay. So if I go down here and go to Command Prompt, and then Network Places Wizard. Now, I'm going to go to the Advanced tab, and I'm going to uncheck Secure Sign In. So that's no longer required. I'll apply that. Uh, back here in the Users tab, there's an option. Users must enter oops, a username and password to use this computer. If I uncheck this like I just accidentally did, if I uncheck this, I will not need to use a password to log into the machine. So in other words, when the machine first boots up, it will just automatically log into whoever I set up. So if I hit Apply, it's going to ask me, who am I going to set up to automatically sign in? So user X has a password, so I will enter a uh, password on both of these. And now, when I reboot this machine, it is going to simply just automatically log in with user X. I will not need a password at all. Now, let me uh, show you how that works. I'm going to reboot the machine. And now, um, as is probably obvious, this is not the most secure way of having your machine set up, um, having it just automatically log you in. Now, there's a lot, especially home users, a lot of people would like this. They don't want to have to bother typing in their password. They just want it to boot up 
Uh, as you'll see here, we are booting up. I have a DVD in the drive, so it's going to time out before it starts finishing booting up Windows 10. Um, but I don't have to do anything. I just turn the machine on. It'll log me in. It knows me and all, all is well, right? So there's user X. It's signing me in. I don't have to type in any password, right? So that's great. But that's not secure. In a company environment, in a corporate environment, this is not something you want to do. You will not want to set it up like this. But the option is there. That said, let's go back in and uh, turn that off because that just isn't good practice in general. That clicks wizard and then let's re-enable this. So now everyone has to use their password. Okay. Now there's two other ways that we can uh, log into the machine. One of them is called fast user switching. So, so if I go down here to the control, to, excuse me, to the start menu and click on the users, um, this is going to bring up a list of all the other users. If I just click on Bob, what this is going to do is it's going to log, give me the option to log Bob in. I never signed out with user X, so user X never logged out. They're still there. Um, this just allows me to log in as Bob. So here I am. Bob is here. I did not log out, like I said. If I want to switch back to user X, I can just see user X is signed in. I can just click on user X and then I give the password and then I'm back in. This takes a fraction of the time. See how immediately I'm switched over to user X. This is a fraction of the time that it would take to actually log out and log back in. When you're in a situation where you have multiple people that have accounts on the same machine and they will be using that machine throughout the day, fast user switching is one thing that you can use. Notice you still have to have the password to be able to log in and out as either Bob or in this case user X. So let me go back to Bob and log him out because um, this will this very next thing that I want to I want to talk about requires Bob to be logged out. So the last way to log into um, Windows that I want to talk about is something called assigned access. Now assigned access is something you're going to see like at kiosks or uh, trade shows. If, if there is a machine that's just set up in a lobby so anyone can walk up and maybe uh, get on the internet or maybe they have some special app like um, sometimes there will be companies or, or stores that will have kiosks for you to apply for a job. You go to the kiosk and it's all it has is this one apply for a job um, program and that's all you're able to get at. Well, that's what assigned access is. So to get to assigned access, let's just go to settings. And then you're at settings, we'll go to accounts. And then under accounts, family and other people. Um, so assigned access is other people. So right here is the option to set up for assigned access. Now what this does, let me click on it. What this does is this allows you to take a non-administrator user and we'll talk about administrators in just a minute. And um, assign them, let's get Bob here, we're gonna assign them an application, a specific application that this account can use. In other words, this is it. Once you um, are logged in, this is all you're gonna get to use. So let me see uh, if I can come up with a good, a good program for him to use. What does Bob get to use? Maybe Bob can only, did I, did I miss Edge? I think I missed Edge. Oh, calculator. Let's just do calculator. So the only thing Bob's going to be able to do on this computer is use the calculator. So if I try and sign in as Bob, that's that's it. That's all I'm going to get. So let me go back here. So now Bob is set up as an assigned access with just calculator access. So now if I were to let me sign in as Bob. Now all Bob's going to be able to do is use the calculator. See? It just logs in as calculator, and there we go. And this is the only thing he'll be able to do. And the only way that we're able to get out of this is to actually sign Bob out. And to sign Bob out, we'll have to send a Control-Alt-Delete to the system to get back to the window sign-on screen where we can then um, switch back to user X and sign Bob out. And so there we go. So those are the five different ways that we can access, that we can log into Windows. So just as a quick recap, we have the regular Windows sign-on screen, we have the secure sign-on, we have um, fast user switching, we have the automatic sign-in where we don't need a password at all, and then we have assigned access. So those are the five different ways that we can log in. So now that we've talked about the different ways to log in, let's talk about the different user accounts. Right now, we just have my user X and Bob. Those are the two accounts that we've been dealing with. User X was the one was is who we're logged in as right now, and who we created when we first 
uh, installed Windows 10. Bob, I created later just as a regular local account so I could show off different things we could do with local accounts. But now let's talk about some of the ones that are built in, some of the automatic accounts. So to get there, let's uh, right click on the start menu and then go to computer management. This is another way to get a computer management. And then in computer management, let's go to local users and groups. This is an important place to be. So in the users folder, you're gonna see that there are actually five users, not two. That's because there are three built-in users that are hidden normally. If I were to go to settings and go to accounts, we see user X and we can get at Bob, but that's it. Um, we don't have access to these other accounts. Now, the reason we don't is, as you can see, there's a little down arrow there. These are um, disabled accounts. And by default, they're built into Windows, but they're disabled. So the first one I want to talk about is the administrator account. Now, the administrator account has full access to everything, basically. They are, it is an all-powerful um, account used to manage and, and handle the the operating system. Now, because of that, it's pretty powerful and is not something that we want everyone to use. For a long time, this was not the case. For a long time, the administrator account was not disabled by default. It was just sitting there and anyone could hack into your computer and use it. Um, so a couple things about the administrator account. So one is that it is, as you can see, it's not visible, which is good for security. <laughs> Number two, it has by default a blank password. This is not good for security. Uh, so you need to keep it disabled, and if you are going to enable it, you need to give it a password because it doesn't start with one. Um, it can't be deleted. It can't be locked out. Like if you have um, some some logins, some users, if you you can set up um, a rule that if you have a bad login, like you enter the wrong password a set number of times, it can lock you out. It can say, yeah, this account is not going to be able to be used until you get an administrator to unlock you. Well, you need an administrator to unlock you, so the administrator itself can't be locked out because then if that locks out, then you can't reset it. Do you see the chicken and egg thing going on here? You need the administrator to be able to unlock an account, but if the administrator gets locked out, then you can't unlock anything. So the, uh, the administrator itself cannot be locked out. It also can't be removed from the administrator's groups, which I'll talk about in a second when I, when I mention groups. Um, now, it can be disabled, as you see right now, and you can also rename it. And that's actually a very common thing that people will go in and they will rename the administrator account so people trying to hack into the system won't just assume, oh, it's administrator, it's there. You'll give it some other name and they won't necessarily know that it's there and it's hidden. So even if they're somehow able to enable an administrator account, if you call it something else, uh, then they won't be able to do it. So let me show you how that's done. So if I select administrator, I right click and go to properties. In here, I can, um, I can make some changes to the administrator itself. So for example, right now the password never expires because there isn't one um, and the account is disabled. If I want to enable the, the account, I will click on it and now the account, once I hit OK and apply it, it's going to be enabled. Um, let me do that right now. So now the account is enabled. I don't have a password yet, so if I right click again, one of those options was to set the password. So let me set the password. And resetting this, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is just saying that if you do change the password, things bad things could happen if you've been using your administrator account. So, okay, let's proceed. And I will set password to a very top secret eight-letter password called password. And then the use, um, if you click OK, in other words, if I change the password, anything that I encrypted, which I haven't yet, I haven't done any encryption, um, any stored passwords, all that stuff, that's all going to go away because this has changed, it is no longer the same. That's fine because this is my first time doing it. But keep in mind that all of this stuff, the encryption that we were talking about um, with, with uh, NTFS last week, that is that relies on the user uh, account and the user password. So if you change that, you have now changed your access to your encrypted files and you will lose access. Okay, so, okay. Hey, I now have a password. Okay, and now let's say I want to rename administrator to something else. So if I right click, I have the option to rename it. Uh, let's call it Fred. So our new administrator is now Fred. So now we have an administrative account that is enabled. Fred can do anything. Fred is a permanent member of the administrator's group. Um, Fred will not be able to be deleted. 
Uh, for example, if I were to right click on Bob, I can delete Bob. Fred, if I right click, I can try and delete it. And it'll say, oh boy, this is, this, is, this is bad. Do I want to delete Fred? Sure, I'll delete Fred. Uh-oh, about to delete the administrator account. Am I sure? Am I really sure? Okay, I'm sure. Uh-oh, it won't let me. So I went through all of that to say, are you sure? Are you really sure? And at the end, you can't uh, because it's a built-in account. It's the administrator account. Even though it's called Fred, it's the administrator account. And so now I'm not able to delete Fred. Okay. Now, the other two accounts um, to, that, are, that are available in Windows 10 by default. First one is the guest account. The guest account is exactly what it sounds like. It's built in specifically for guest access. Guest access uh, allows people to be able to log into the machine, but you won't be able to store any information there. So uh, in most of the other accounts that we have, there will be folders where you can store data, where you can store preferences, uh, things like that. You may not do that with a guest account. The guest account, when enabled, will only allow you to get into the system um, and run some programs. And the programs are dis decided. You decide which programs that the guest can run, and that's it. Public machines very often have guests. Um, guest accounts enables that, and that's all you can use to get in. The guest account is a member of the guest group, which um, we, there are a number of different groups that we have here in Windows. Uh, before I get to that, I just want to mention the default account. Now, now this account is uh, very specific. This is something that is managed by the system. This is a, an account that may not be deleted. You may not log in as it. You may not really do anything to it. It's specifically there so that the system can make configuration changes, and that's the account that it's going to use. Um, it is not, you, like I said, you cannot delete it. Um, if I try to enable it, dun, dun, dun. okay, hey, great. Now, if I go to log in to it, I would not be able to see it. If I go to the login screen, the default account does not appear in the login screen. And so I have no way of easily accessing or um, logging in as the default account. So it's there for the computer, the system itself, not the users. All right, so let me, let me go back and disable this so nothing funky happens. All right, and while we're at it, I'm just gonna go ahead and disable uh, Fred, our new administrator, okay? All right, so that's it for users, for the different uh, built-in users. Let's talk about groups for a minute. Now, there are a ton of groups. I am not going to go through all of them. I'm going to go through a couple of the um, ones that we will use most often. Uh, you may also create your own groups, which I'll show you in a second. So groups are ways that we can take the users and assign them specific roles in the system. So if you are a member of the administrators group, if I leave this open, uh, administrators have complete and unrestricted access to the computer and domain. So let me open up this and we'll see who is administrator. Fred, the administrator account, the built-in. Um, and Fred may not be removed from this, from this group because Fred is the built-in local administrator. And I, I'm not allowed to change that. Now user X, which was the user we created when we built, when we installed the system, by default he gets thrown into the administrator group. I can take him out though. He doesn't have to stay an administrator. So these are the two accounts that if I am logged in, I may do anything I want, including ruin the system. So it's a powerful, uh, powerful a lot login, a powerful account. So you need to be careful who gets access, who gets administrative access to your machine. Now, if I suddenly had an epiphany and decided, well, Bob, I need Bob to be part of my administrative staff, I can add somebody. If I click on add, I can um, do a search for the people here. Sure enough, Bob Bob exists. I can say, okay, this will probably ruin some things later on down the line, but I can make Bob a member of the administrators group. That means Bob will now have all of the same access that everyone else has. Well, I don't really trust Bob, so let me remove him from the administrators group. There we go. Okay, so the administrators group basically gives you full control. Now, let's talk about a couple of the others that are a little bit um, a little bit different. And these are some that we referenced a bit last week in the NTFS, especially the permission section. Uh, let's talk about the users group. The users group, any user in the system is part of the users group. Notice the users are prevented from making accidental or intentional system-wide changes and then and can run most, and I ran out of space, but run most applications. So these are the users that are able to basically log into the computer. We have Bob. Um, what you have here, um, <laughs> this is because you are logged in, 
this is actually you. This is user X. But um, we'll get into what this means later on down the line. Uh, but essentially, when you log in, there are, is a copy of all the stuff that you have when you log in that's set in a place called the registry. And so we need to know who is logged in currently, and they change that name so it isn't you don't see that member here. But we are a member of the users group. Now, if I go to... Da -da -da. Guests. Let's talk about guests. If I go to the guests folder, these are the people that have guest access. Right now, it's just the guest members. You can actually create other people, other accounts, and put them in the guest property, in the guest um, folder, guest um, guest group. That's what I'm trying to say, the guest group. And these these guests will have limited access to the machine. Okay. And now, on, and the rest of these names, as you can see, da -da -da, network configurator operators, performance log users, performance monitor users, power users, these are all um, built-in groups that give specific access to specific parts of the system. So, for example, um, let's let's talk about the performance log users and the, no performance monitor users. This might even be easier. Um, if I have one person in my office and I give them the job to check the performance of the computers every week to make sure that there's nothing going wrong, that it looks like they're working as they should. Um, I can put them in the performance monitor users group, and then this will give them access to specific tools in the system that will allow them to do this job. Normally, you would have to be an administrator to access all of those. So by putting a normal user also into the performance monitor users group, that gives them additional abilities. So let me, let me add Bob since he's right now the only person that we have available until we hire somebody else. Um, Bob is now performance monitor users. Now instead of just being a user, he actually has the ability to do some system, um, system tools, system tasks. Now these are all cumulative. So the more groups you're part of, the more, um, the more access you have on the system. If you're an administrator, you have all the access you need. You don't really need to be in any other um, in any other group. But but if if you are not an administrator, depending on the group you're in, that gives you um, specific acts, actions that you can take. Okay, so that's what groups are for. They're meant to um, they're meant to group users into specific organizations that can then have certain abilities, certain privileges, certain permissions. Now, I can also create, create uh, my own custom groups if I want. These groups aren't going to give me initial permissions to the system like all these default built-in groups are, but I can use them later, especially when we start talking about network access. I can use them to group my users into specific uh, roles for the company and then use that to define the access that these users are going to have for shared folders, for shared devices such as printers, and access across the network, things like that. So if I want to do that, I can right click anywhere here. This will give me the, um, the menu option and I can go to new group and I can call it what I want. So let's just call it the finance group. Um, and right away I can add a, a, a user to the finance group. So let's, let's add good old Bob to our finance group. See, now he's part of the finance group. If I hit create, uh, it's going to think, it's going to think. Uh, there we go. So now finance. If I click on finance, you're going to see Bob is a member of the finance group. I can then add whoever I want. Again, finance isn't going to add anything to system um, abilities. I won't be able to have any more permissions in the system, but I will be able to use this later on when we start talking about networking to group users and then to reference an entire group of users just by finance. So for example, I could give the finance department access to a specific shared drive, which then I don't have to go to each user and then add every, add access to the finance drive to every user. Just take all the users that are going to have access to finance, throw them here in the group, and then that's how I can manage it that way. And we'll talk more about that when we get to the um, to the networking section of the class. Okay, so that's it. That is what we want to talk about for this week. We want to talk about the five different ways that we can log into Windows. We wanted to talk about uh, the built-in local user accounts and groups that we're able to put all of the different users in. So that's it for today. Uh, next discussion, we will be going on and talking about actually configuring and managing users at a deeper level.